So we talked about Markov chains a little bit. And I want to put it up in the singular because I want to remind you the building blocks of a Markov chain. You have a state space. And we're going to call it capital S. And you have these one-step transition probabilities. That I call P of I, J, where I and J run over the state space S. And you interpret that as the probability that the next state is J given that the current state is I. And by the way, this is a homogeneous Markov chain, which says that those things don't depend on time. And finally, an initial distribution. That I call pi of 0. And you can think of this as an infinite row vector. And the entries in it have to be non-negative and some to run. One, and you interpret the jth entry in that row vector as being the probability of the Markov chain is in state j at time 0. And I went through that light wall example, you know, which I think is suggestive. And it illustrates the Markov property. And what I want to do now is I want to continue talking about these things. OK. So we discussed the Markov property last time. And essentially what that means is that regardless of the history up to before time now, if you know that the thing is in state i now, then the probability that's going to be in state j is going to be p of ij. It, there's no reference to history there. Okay. Now, what's a cool thing about the Markov property? It enables us to compute a lot of interesting probabilities very easily. Okay. So it enables us. To compute some quote unquote interesting probabilities. And that's a value laden term. But you'll see what I mean in a second. So, for example, suppose we have this, this I'm just going to write up a random transition diagram, say, goes like this, say this is P, and this is Q, this is 1 minus P, this is 1 minus Q minus R, this is R, and this is R also, let's say, and this is 1. No, it can't be 1. It has to be 1 minus R. OK, so there's, there's sort of a random state transition diagram for Markov chain. Suppose someone comes up to us on Hope Plaza and holds this up to us and says, I want to know the probability that the state, given that the state starts in state number 1 at time 0, it goes 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, by the way, there has to be a 1 here. There's nothing. And so here's a question, a whole class of type question. What is the probability? that the state follows the path 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, given that it's in state 1 at time 0. OK, now what's that probability? Ordinarily, we have to do a complicated computation. But because of the Markov property, it turns out that all we have to do is look at the picture and multiply the numbers on all the arrows you follow in order to follow that path of states. So here's the answer. It's just the product of the probabilities on the branches you follow to achieve that state sequence. That is to say, it goes 1, 2, 1, 2. So it goes P, Q, P, right? So that's the P, Q, P comes from the 1, 2, 1, 2. And then it goes over to 3. 
and then it goes over to 4. Get it? This is the 1 to 2 transition. This is the 2 to 1 transition is probability Q. The 1 to 2 transition is probability P again. The 2 to 3 transition is probability R. And the 3 to 4 has probability 1 minus R. Get it? Yeah. So, um, in 4, you have a, you know, you have a D. Yes. If it gets to 4, it stays there. It's like the extinction state for those populations we talked about last week. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, boy. I can't even think about food right now, but I don't really know what's left inside, so I don't know what the potential is. <laughs> you know how that is? Uh, anyway, folks who are watching at home, I'm not feeling too well today. I didn't want to tell you that, but, you know, you'll have to put up with me. Anyway, all right. So that's a cool thing about Markov. So we can figure out any, the probability of any path just by looking at the probabilities on the path and multiplying them all together. Very cool. And the Markov property is key to this. And if you look at the handout, the Markov chain handout, you'll see why it's key. It's kind of subtle, you know, but, but anyway, you'll get it. All right, so what I want to do is I want to play a, a game with the transition probabilities. And in order to do that, I want to tell you, to, I want to tell you that there are things that we're going to be looking at that are deterministic quantities associated with a Markov chain. That is to say, they're not random at all. And there's things that we're going to be looking at that are probabilistic or random quantities associated with a Markov chain. OK, so associated with a Markov chain are both deterministic and random quantities. And so far, we've, we've really talked only about, determ about deterministic quantities. But thanks, Cameron. <laughs> I had to use both hands. Anyway, uh, we've talked only about deterministic. So what are some deterministic? These are things like the numbers associated with thing or the state space. So S itself is a state space, is a deterministic quantity. There's nothing probabilistic about the state space. It's just a set of things. Usually it's 1 to m or 1 to infinity, positive integers. And P of ij, those are just numbers. Those are just portions of the spinner that the operator on the light wall spins to figure out the ith, the ith spinner guy does that. And also pi of 0. Those are just numbers. They're not random variables at all. OK? And there'll be more. So more to come. OK, so what about some random quantities? I, I would say that the most elementary random quantity is what state the Markov chain is in at a given time. OK? So the most elementary such thing is something that I'm always going to call capital X sub n. And in general, with the notable exception of the P of ij's and s, the random quantities are going to be capital letters and the deterministic quantities are going to be small letters. Okay. So xn, which is the state, the Markov chain. And I'm often going to abbreviate Markov chain by just saying chain, just so I don't have to write Markov a thousand times, is in at time n for all n bigger than or equal to 0. Now, there's, there's one of those for every n. So one such random quantity for every n bigger than 0. So x0 is a random variable. x1 is a random bigger than or equal to 0. x0 is a random variable. x1 is a random variable. x2, and so on. Those are all random quantities. Now, what is the probability, for example, that x sub 0 equals, say, 3? Does anyone know what that is? Given that the Markov chain has these building blocks, right? 
has a state space S, and I'm assuming S has at least three states, okay, to make it non-trivial. The one-step transition probability is P of ij, initial distribution pi of zero, which you can think of as an infinite vector of numbers. What is the probability x zero equals three? Just to catch you up, yeah. Yes, exactly, it's pi three of zero. <coughs> what is the probability that x sub 59 equals 17, given x sub 58 equals 11. What's that? Yes. Or, well, actually, not quite. Yes. It's p of 17, comma 11. It's the probability that at any time you make a transition from state 17 to state 11. And it doesn't matter that you have 59 and 58 there. You could have 3 and 2. You could have 11 and 10. You could have 10 to the 59th and 10 to the 59th minus 1. Yes, Matt? Would be 11, 17. Or I guess it's a notation. Yeah. The, the way that I set them up is, and this is the standard way, the state you start in is the left number. The state you end up in is the right number. So this would have to be 11, 17. You're right. Sorry about that. Everybody get that? It's crucial to make sure we get it right the first time. OK. So anyway, those are, those are probabilities that these random quantities or conditional things, conditional probabilities that these random quantities, these x of n's, take on various values. OK. Sorry, microphone. All right, now, the game I want to play with the transition probabilities is just a recursion kind of thing, OK? For every m bigger than 0, I want to define p superscript m of ij, and this is for each i and j in the state space, p superscript m ij is the probability that x sub m equals j given x sub 0 equals i. So what is that? That's the probability of making a one step or an m step transition following a path that takes, that starts at i and ends up in j and has m steps to it. So let me describe this verbal. So this is the probability of following a path starting from i at time 0 and ending up in j at time m. And by the way, you're allowed to hit i and j before time n if you want. This is not the first time. The probability the first time you get to j from i is, is that. This is the, just the probability of following any old path that could repeat i's, could repeat j's, or whatever, and getting to j in time exactly m. OK, so people call this the m-step transition probabilities. And they satisfy a nice recursion. OK, so let's see, what, let's see the recursion they satisfy. And then look at it in the special case where you have a finite number of states, max. The word after started. Uh, from, from. Sorry, oh, that's very cryptic, eh? From. From i at time 0. Excellent, thank you. OK, so those are the m-step transition probabilities. Now, let's look at p. So p1, by this definition, is just going to be b of ij, right, for all i and j in S. That's a step of probability of making a one-step transition from state i to state j. What about p2? How about p2? All right, well, let's figure it out. What does it take to make a two-step transition from i to j? You have to make a one-step transition to somewhere could be i, could be j, but just somewhere. And then make another one-step transition and end up at j, right? 
So this is the probability, and I'm going to be really pedantic and write it out a little bit, of making a one-step transition i to anywhere, any state, then a one-step from there to j. Yes. Absolutely. There can be multiple paths. Yeah. Well, oh, the, each path has a. Di we're going to end up summing over all possible paths here. The, every path, every two step path has, from i to j, has its own probability. But to figure out the probability of taking any old two step path from i to j, we have to sum over all those, which are mutually exclusive paths. Okay? Now, the thing in the braces here, making a one step transition from i to any state and then a one step from there to j, if you call the any state thing, let's call it k. So that's the any state and the k. For different k's, those are mutually exclusive events. Therefore, their probabilities sum. So different k's, different sort of intermediaries, implies mutually exclusive, and that's just a fancy way of saying disjoint which means that the probabilities sum, i.e., thus, P2 of ij equals the sum over all possible intermediate states k, so the sum over all the states k in S of the probability of making a one-step transition from i to k times the probability of making a one-step transition from k to j. And that's true for all i and j in the state space s. OK? What we do is we say there's a lot, there may be lots of ways of getting from i to j in two steps. <clears throat> Figure out the probability of each of those ways and then sum them up. That's the probability of making a two-step transition from i to j. OK, now you can carry on with this. You can, you can prove easily the following recursion. I, I, actually, why don't I just say it? So in fact, for every m bigger than, say, 1, okay, pmij, or let's do pm plus 1 of ij, so we can make m bigger than or equal to 1, pm plus 1 of ij, that's the probability of making an m plus 1 step transition from i to j. That's going to be the sum over all k of the state space of the probability that you make an m step transition from i to k and follow that up with a 1 step from k to j. So that's for all i and j. So this is a nice recursion that gives pm plus 1 in terms of PM and P. I'm being sloppy writing today. I apologize for that. OK. And you can read more about this in it. And this, this equation has a fancy name. I think it's called the chapman kolmogorov equation or something like that. There's no reason to remember that. IMHO. Anybody heard of that chapman kolmogorov equation? Is that, is that the chapman kolmogorov equation? You don't know. But you've heard of it. <laughs> OK. Let's take a quick break, and then I'll, I'll continue with this. So anyway, let's look at this in the special case that you have a finite number of states. Special case, state space S is equal to the set consisting of 1, 2, up through capital M. All right? Then we can take the P of ij's and array them in a matrix, an M by N matrix. So define the 
capital M by capital M matrix. And just for purposes of this, I'm going to put an underline under it, just to emphasize that it's not the same as the P of the probabilities. P is to have IJ element, IJ entry, P of IJ for all I and J in the state space. Then <coughs> then for all m, little m, bigger than 0, and let's make it bigger than or equal to 1 just for the heck of it, p superscript m of ij, the, and this is a probability. This is the probability you make an m-step transition from i to j. That's equal to the matrix power capital P underline to the M sub IJ. That's the IJ entry in P to the M. And this is for all I and Js. Now this isn't really surprising because if you look, if you look at this formula for P2 that we derived earlier, it looks off an awful lot like the formula for computing the IJ entry of a matrix product, right? The sum over Matrix IK times matrix KJ over K gives you matrix products of IJ. And that's what's happening here. Okay? All right. So that's some games we can play with those. All right. Now, some notation. This is an irritating notation, but it's notation we're going to be using quite a bit. If you have some random quantity, so given some random quantity, and this doesn't even have to be a numer numerical quantity, so I'm just going to call it z, okay? And some possible value for it, little z. What I want to do is I want to define probability sub i that z equals little z, okay, to be the probability that this random quantity takes on the value little z given that the Markov chain started in state i at time 0. So this is the probability that z equals little z given x0 equals i. So that's the probability that. Can you see this, John? OK. He was telling me in between that we should elevate this last line some. So the, the probability that z equals z, given that the Markov chain is starts in state i, at time 0. OK, so that's a piece of notation we're going to be using. And if z happens to be a numerical quantity, so it makes sense to compute expected values and conditional expected values of it, all that. Then we say e sub i of z. We use this notation to denote the expected value of that random quantity z given that the Markov chain started in state i at time 0. So that's what, that's what e, i, and p prob sub i mean. Now you may say, well, wait, what's, what's a non-numerical quantity, a random quantity that might be interested in? Well, a good example of that is the state. I mean, we don't think of these states, these numbers 1 through m or 1 through infinity as being 
numbers per se. We just think of them as labels for states. You don't take the average, you say, oh, it's, it's sort of halfway in state two and halfway in state one, time three. You know, that's not a thing. So an example of a non-numerical quantity. So here's a reality check. Reality check. In terms of stuff we've discussed already, say I've given an n bigger than zero. I want to get, I want to let z equal x sub m. So the state at time m is going to be the random quantity I'm going to consider. What is probability sub i that z equals j in terms of stuff we've talked about already? Remember, the probability sub i of a random quantity taking on a certain value is going to be the probability that the random quantity takes on that value given that the Markov chain started in state i at time 0. Yes? Yes, exactly. This is piece superscript m of ij. Does everybody see that? That's important. Yeah. It says this. The probability that z equals z given that the chain starts in state i at time 0. That's partly English. <laughs> it has a given sign and an equal sign, all you know, but whatever. All right? So let me take away the what is, because that doesn't make sense. OK, so anyway, there's, there's that. OK, now I'm going to introduce some more non-random quantities associated with Markov chains. So here's some important additional, remember I told you there'd be more later, deterministic quantities. And this is a, a heap of notation I'm piling on you today. I apologize for that. Maybe that's why I felt sick last night and this morning because I was worried about piling a heap of notation on you guys. So here's some additional qu deterministic quantities associated with the Markov chain. Okay. Say I'm given i and j in the state space S. And k bigger than 0, so k is an integer bigger than 0, I'm going to define, and I'll stop there because I think that's where the table hits you, correct? Figuratively. The table does not hit him literally. I'm going to define <laughs> f superscript k with parentheses around it sub ij to be the probability that k is the first positive time that the state is j given that the state at time 0 is i. OK. Now the f is supposed to be first, first time, first time. So that's the mnemonic for that. First time you can hit i from j. First positive time you can hit i from j. And we don't ever count, we, we don't talk about f0 sub ij as being 1 or anything like that. OK? And another way of writing this is the probability that k is the smallest value 
for which x k equals j given x zero equals i. Okay. So that's important. That's another important quantity. The first hitting times. So the f superscript a sub i j are the so-called first hitting times as i and j run over the state space s. Or the, they're not the first hitting times. They're, we'll get back to that later. I don't, that's, a, that's a random quantity. OK. So erase that. All right, so that's what f superscript k sub i j. And by the way, uh, if, you, if you take i equals j, you get f superscript k sub jj. What is that? That's the, the probability that k is the first time you get back to j, given that you started in j. <coughs> And you'll probably notice that as we go along, you know, through this, the, these kinds of statements I put in the probability things are going to get more and more like anthropomorphic. Like you're doing, you're walking through the Markov chain. The probability that you come back to J, given that you started in I and all that kind of stuff. I hope you don't mind. Okay, but that's just the way I think of it. Okay. So that's those are important quantities, and given I and J. Define R sub i j to be the probability that you hit state j in finite time, given that you start in state i at time 0. And I want to emphasize at some finite positive time, So let's put at instead of in, given that you start in state i. And r is supposed to stand for reach, the probability that you reach j in finite time starting in i. And f is superscript k sub i j, are the first, probably the k is the first time you get back to j given that you start in i. Okay? Now it turns out we can. We can write Rij in terms of the Fs. Okay, here's an important fact. Fact is that Rij is equal to the sum over all k in the state space S of f superscript k sub ij. That's true for all i and j in S. Now, why is that the case? Why is that the case? What does it mean to reach j in finite time starting from i? It means that you reach j in finite time starting from i. There has to be a first time you do that, right? If you do it. And if you reach j first at time, say, 1, that's disjoint. That's a mutually exclusive event from reaching j first at time 7 or reaching j first at time 13. Okay, So the probability of all those, the union of all those events sums those things here, the f superscript k sub ij. So the idea? of this is that hitting j first at time k bigger than 0 starting from i and I'll emphasize first is mutually exclusive so for different values of k constitute 
and the prose is a little rougher than usual today, I apologize for that, constitute a set of mutually exclusive events and therefore the probability of their union is the sum of their probabilities but their union is all the ways of reaching j from i in finite time. So whose union is the probability, or is the event, quote unquote, reach j in finite positive time, starting from i. OK, Matt, question. K is the s is state. So it's the sum from k equals one to m if it's a finite state space. It's the sum from over k bigger than zero if it's the infinite. It's because like if you're sum are you summing over all states? Like I, I would assume that you'd sum all. Oh oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're yeah k bigger than zero. I'm you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm being sloppy here. K bigger than zero. These are times. <laughs> sorry guys. Okay, someone else had his hand up over there. That was the same thing? Okay, good. Good. You guys are on my case in a good way. That's awesome. All right. So that's what RIJ is. All right, now we're ready for very important definitions. Okay. And let's take another little break, just a little one now, and come back and do those in a second. Okay, here's a definition. A state J in S is said to be recurrent if RJJ equals one and transient if rjj is less than 1. Now once again, what is rjj? rjj is the probability that you come back to j at some positive time given that you started in j at time 0. Recurrent states are not just those for which there's a positive probability you come back, they're the ones for which you absolutely do will come back. It's probability zero event that you will not return. Okay, so that is to say, with probability one, you return to J in finite time, starting from J. And transient is, i.e., there's a positive probability of starting in J, well, of never return, let me state it carefully, of never returning to J, given that you're starting from J. So transient states are states where there's a way to leave, a positive probability way of leaving and never coming back, no matter how small. Recurrent states are states that you're always going to come back to, given that you're, you started in them. Okay? So that's what transient recurrent states are. And clearly, being a transient state is incompatible with being a current, uh, recurrent state. So the state space divides up into two disjoint sets. The set of transient states and the set of recurrent states. I will get to you in a sec. Let me just write this down. Thus, S equals S sub T. Let's call it union S sub R. Disjoint union. And these are all the transient states. And these are all the recurrent states. OK. 
question. Transient, you may come back to it later, but there's a positive probability that you will leave and never come back. You don't necessarily. I'll, I'll go through some examples here so you can see. Yeah. So uh, there is a finite number of states. Yep. And then for, for a state to be transient, the entire Markov chain needs to have an absorbing state. Is that no. I could draw one. That's transient. These are recurrent. No, nobody's absorbing. Okay. By the way, for those of you watching at home, we haven't gotten to those concepts yet. So, <laughs> yeah. Same diagram. What if there was an error to do one? Would that would one still be transient? No. No. Nope. It turns out. Okay. So let, let's look at some examples. And we'll get more rigorous about this as we go along. One chain that we use for a lot of things is, is the simple two-state one, where you have probably p of going from 1 to 2, probably q of going from 2 to 1, and 1 minus p here and 1 minus q here. Okay. Now, let's look at this one. Okay, and here I'm assuming that p is bigger than 0 and q is bigger than 0 and less than 1. Okay, so the, it's a non-trivial, both of the P and the Q are non-trivial things. All right, so how many people think both of those states are recurrent? A few people, yeah. How many people think that depending on the values of P and Q, like for example, suppose P is high and Q is low, so there's a high probability of going from 1 to 2 and a low probability of going from 2 to 1. Depending on what P and Q are relative to each other, one of them could be transient and one of them could be recurrent. Okay, and how many people think that they're both transient? Okay, they're both transient. Okay, so there's opinion is divided. Okay, opinion is divided. Let's figure out what the probability, given that you start in 1, you return to 1 in finite time. To do that, I'm going to figure out the fk's. Okay? So let's look at the, uh, say, f1 sub 1, 1. What is that? That's the probability that the first time I get back to state number 1 happens at time 1. What's the probability of that in this picture? You have to follow this branch, eh? Right? So it's 1 minus p. OK, so what's f2 sub 1, 1? Well, there's two ways of doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, you could do it. You could go twice through the 1 minus p branch. Or you could go over to 2 and come back to 1. Sorry? Oh, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, absolutely. I, ha I have to fix that. So, two steps, the only way to do it is go P and Q, right? And thank you for that, thank you very much. And it gets complicated pretty quickly, F3 sub 1, 1. You have to go over to 2 and stay there enough time to come back to 1, right? So you have to go P, and then go 1 minus Q once, and then q, right? What's f11 for? The probability of getting back to 1 the first time at time 4. You go over to p, and you stay there for 2, and then you come back. So it's going to be p times 1 minus p squared times q. And a pattern emerges, right? Yeah, 1 minus q. You're right. You're right. Thank you. OK. 
Everybody get how we're figuring these out? Okay. Yep. Well, the F is for first time, yeah. The first time you get back. This is the probability that the first time you hit state 1 starting from 1 is time 1. This is the probability the first time you hit state 1 starting from 1. Right, but we uh, are thinking of considering all the possible paths from the start state to the end state. First time, first time. Like, yeah, P, P3 of 1, 1 would be all the possible ways of getting from 1 to 1 in three steps. F3 of 1, 1, on the other hand, is all the ways of getting first to, to getting to 1 in three steps and not hitting 1 in the meantime while you're doing that. Okay? So when you add all these up, you get R11. So the add them up. Yes. Yes, exactly. So let's add those up and see what we get. Each of them is going to be PQ, except for this first one. So R11 is equal to 1 minus P plus, and I'm going to have PQ times the sum from L equals 0 to infinity of 1 minus Q to the L, right? Because that's the pattern. And we know that if there's a pattern, it has to be true for all, you know, no, just kidding. OK, so what does this come out to be? This comes out to be 1 minus p plus pq times, this thing is 1 over 1 minus 1 minus q, which is just 1 over q. So the q's cancel. And I get 1 minus p plus p equals 1. OK. So what is the upshot here? Is 1 a recurrent state? Yes, because with probability 1, given that you started 1, you will return to 1 in finite time. So i.e., given that you started 1, you'll return to 1 in finite time with probability 1. 1 is recurrent. And that's true no matter what q and p are, no matter what relationship they bear to each other. And this is for all p and q in the interval 0 to 1. And the symmetry of the situation, I hope, makes it clear that 2 is also recurrent. Similarly, 2 is recurrent. Now, what's the intuition here? What's the intuition about recurrence? And th this is actually a useful way to think sometimes. OK, so now you were the one who, you were the only one who was right, who said that both of them were recurrent. <laughs> and the rest of you either didn't vote, or voted that they were both transient, or that they were one transient, one recurrent, depending on the P and Q, which are all perfectly plausible things to think. You know, but I'm just showing you that this is what's actually the case. Now, what's the intuition here? The intuition, suppose I start in 1. What's the only way I can ever not return to 1 in finite time? That means I follow this p branch, and then I stay over here forever, right? So intuition. The only way to start in 1 and never come back is follow the P branch and then follow the 1 minus Q branch forever after. Okay. 
So there's only one path through the Markov chain that leaves one and doesn't come back to one, right? It's the path that goes this and then this forever. And that path intuitively has probability zero because its probability is p times 1 minus q to the infinity. So this is just one path through the Markov chain. And it has probability, this is once again intuitively, 1 times 1 minus q times 1 minus, or p times 1 minus q times 1 minus q, dot, 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 forever. Or p times 1 minus q to the infinity, which is 0. Okay, T Taylor? Is it That's true. That's true, but you, what you, could, you could do an argument of the kind I did with the populations last time, or two times ago, where you say, for all n, the probability that you never get back to 1 in time n is less than or equal to this, and therefore the probability you never get back to 1 in finite time is 0. It's, you can actually make it rigorous, but this, this is purely intu in, in, intuitive argument. Okay? That's a rigorous argument to show that 1 is recurrent. This is intuition. Yeah, Randy. Question on transient times. Is there ever a case where it's not zero? Like, could you have a positive transient time? You mean a positive probability of, we haven't talked about times yet. We've talked about prob the R's are the probability that you reach J in finite times. So could you have, because the way I see it, it would only be like zero, could be like five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just see. I'll just write one up here. Um, so we need How about that one? Wait. Yeah, it's the positive. It has to leave, and are, and it's come back in a positive time. I'll get you in a second. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like if you have only one way of escaping, like you have one, two, and three. Let's say from two to three, it's only an escape branch. Yeah. It's not a return branch. Would that be? Would you take that as part of the F when you're doing one one? I'd have to look. You'd have to draw me a picture and. So in the beginning um, of class, you drew a picture with a Markov probability with 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah. Right? And Correct. 4 just had a branch into it and a 1. Correct. Yeah. And 3 was meaning of 4 mm -hmm. with no return. Right. So when you're doing that um, f of 1, 1, would you, you know, in, in that case, would you even factor 3 and 4 as part of it? Because there's no way to return to 1 anyway from that. Well, anytime there's no way to return to 1 once you leave 1, the fk sub 1, 1s are all 0. R11 one, one is 0. Right. And just, so basically, just the existing existence of having a, an escape, you just if you make it a uh, transient state? Yeah. If you can escape, it, yeah, that's exactly it. If, if there's a positive probability way of leaving and never coming back, that's the way to think of transient. You don't have to leave and never come back. You can leave and come back many times, you know. Many, many times. And we'll get to that. How many times? We'll get to that. But you cannot come back. You, you cannot say, you can ass cannot assert that with probability one you will come back. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's, that's one example of computing, you know, transient recurrent things. Let me just put up a couple diagrams on the board and you're going to tell me which ones are transient and which ones are recurrent just by eyeballing them. So how about this one here, two, three, four, and that's one half, one half, one third, one third, one third. One half, and let's one half, 
Okay. Anybody ha care to hazard a guess about which states are transient, which states are recurrent? Oh, I forgot to put this. <laughs> Matt? Uh, three is recurrent, the rest are transient. Correct. So ST, set of transient states, is 1, 2, and 4. SR equals 3. And, and I'm not the set consisting of 3. I'm not expecting you to like be a champ at this right now. This is just something you get you know, used to. You get an idea. If there's a way of getting away, this is the question you have to ask yourself to determine whether a state is transient. Is there a way to leave with positive probability and never come back? If so, the state is transient. So let's look at 1, 2, and th 4. Is there a way to leave one with positive probability and never come back? Well, yeah, because you could go to two and then boom to three and then you're, you're never going to come back. Eh? So that has positive probability one sixth. And there's plenty of other ways to leave one and never come back, but all you need is one. All you need is one positive probability way and boom, it's a transient. Same with two. All you have to do is go to three on the first step. Four, it's a little dice here, you have to go to one, then to two, then to three, and then, you know, four is history. Yes? Well, then I'd have to change this to two-thirds, <laughs> right? Yes, three in that case would be transient, and one, two, and four would be recurrent. Anyway, yeah, Drew. If you had another uh, state like three, uh, so we say they, they both have to be considered transient states because you don't know which one you can find. Uh, you mean if I had, say, this is one sixth, and then I had a one sixth over to five, something like that. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yes, they're both recurrent states, and it turns out the Markov chain theory will tell us that no matter where you start the Markov chain off, you will end up with probability 1 in either 3 or 5. The probability that you end up in 3, the probability that you end up in 5, that's what depends on the initial distribution. Okay? So we are presaging or foreshadowing what is to come in answer to your question. Okay. All right, so now we've, we've played around a bit with these random quantities, non-random quantities. We've, we've only seen one random quantity associated with the Markov chain, the state it's in at any time n. Here's some others. So, so let's back, get back to the general. So a couple more. <coughs> random quantities associated with the Markov chain. Okay, first one is given J in the state space, I'm going to let NJ, capital NJ, equal the number of times the Markov chain visits state J. So the total number of times. The Markov chain visits state J. And if you abbreviate a Markov chain as MC, I mean, I, that def definitely gets us into some kind of hip hop lingo stuff going on here. I don't know. <laughs> so who would be the, who would be like Jam Master J, for example, or, wh or whoever it has to, I don't know. Anyway. OK, I shouldn't think about music while I'm not feeling well giving a lecture. OK, so. So that's the total number of times. Now, nj can be infinite. It can be infinite. So your nj equals infinity is allowed. So note, <coughs> capital nj equals infinity is allowed. Okay, so for example, in a trivial Markov chain with one state, 
that returns to itself with probability 1, right? OK. And j equals infinity. Another random quantity is, given j and s, I'm going to let tj, capital TJ, equal the first time, first positive time, the Markov chain visits state j. OK, so that's tj. And that's the first hitting time, as they call it, for state j. That was what I prematurely was writing up on the board last time. This is called the first hitting time for state j. OK. All right, so given our, I, I'm, I'm going to exercise the notation, or exercise you guys with the no, on the notation, OK? Note that probability, not pob, but prob, probability sub i that tj equals k equals what in terms of our stuff we've talked about already? I, want, I don't want you to answer this one because you answered too many of these already. So I'm going to make like Kyle answer it. How about that? This is the probability that the first positive time you hit state J is K given that you started in state I. We have a name for that. Long erased. You could flip back, that's okay. Yeah. And that's for all i and j and s and k bigger than zero. So I'm remembering that k is a number now. I'm not mistaking it for a state. Everybody get that? Everybody see that? I, I'm just trying to get you used to using this probability sub i kind of notation, whatever. All right, so these are two important random quantities associated with the Markov chain. And they're going to play a major role in our understanding how these things work. OK, now the first fundamental result about Markov chains is the following. So here's a fact. For any j and s, the probability sub j that n j equals infinity is 1 if j is recurrent. And the probability sub j that nj is finite that's going to be obviously 0 if j is recurrent because of that first thing. And it's going to be 1 if j is transient. In other words, you, with probability 1, you visit, again, I'm using the second person Markov chain approach, you visit a transient state finitely many times with probability 1. OK, so IE. And so let's put this up in English. I, it's worth Englishifying things once in a while. 
starting from a recurrent state, you return there infinitely often with probability 1. Starting from a transient state, you return there finitely often with probability 1. You may return there a zillion times, but a zillion is finite. Okay. <coughs> so only finitely often, maybe a lot with probability one. Okay. Now that's a fact about transient and recurrent states. OK, let's see why we should believe this to be the case. What is probability sub j of anything? It's the probability that anything holds given that you started the Markov chain in state j. So suppose j is a recurrent state. If I start in j, the fact that j is recurrent means that with probability 1, I will return to j, right, in finite time. And once I've returned to J, everything resets. Because that's the way Markov chains work. Right? The history is now relevant. It's just it's as if I were at time zero again. So with probably one I come back again. And with probably one I come back again. And again and again. And forever. So with probability one, I will return to J infinitely often if J is a recurrent state. Okay? Now it's a little more subtle to see why the probability that nj is less than infinity is 1 if j is transient, but I, I, we're going to save, I'll save that up for next time. Okay, so let's stop there and pick it up on Thursday.